Oh, what? What? Yeah, that's right. What are you rocking today, Adam? I kind of want my bull of the back because that thing oh. is so good. You want it? I want it back already. You just put on. You can take this back. He just put on. Wait. Yeah, dude. Even the kid's confused. Yeah. He just put on this $20,000 watch. It's worth that much to me. And told me he wanted this $200 quartz. Yeah, take it. Gimme. Take your gimme. Chinatown fun. Gimme. Gimme, gimme. Okay. Um, hi guys, I'm Patrick. And I'm Adam. And welcome to. Properly Wow. Where we offer you a consumer's opinion on everything. Watch Seiko related. related. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what? It this has it has secretly been that way for a while. Uh, we're not doing it for views. We are doing it because we actually just legitimately like Seiko. I yeah. feel like a lot of you guys out there enjoy Seiko too. Don't worry. Just like every collector that starts out with respectably priced watches. God, I mean, like you just okay. So Adam went through two different types of Panerai and it's just landed on more Seikos. Like, how did, how did that happen? You know what I mean? They're vintage now though, so they're cooler. <laughs> they're cooler. Okay. Okay. Anyways, guys, today, another yes. Seiko review. This is Adam's personal piece. Yeah. One of the, I want to say more underrated Seikos um, out there because everyone talks about the Sarb. Sarb 033, Sarb 035. Or even the Sarg. I hear a lot about that. The Sarg. Yeah, like the, the pilot watch. The $600, $700, like yeah. uh, baby Grand Seikos or whatever they call them. But you don't hear a lot of people talk about the <gasps> Sari 055, which is, in my opinion, I, I've seen one Sarb in person before and I think this is way better. Really? So, I mean, look at that date wheel. You got that kanji, Look uh, at that date wheel, man. Taking that. Get this out of the way. What is this even? So I think part of the reason, we'll get to this, but this is, I think, 41 millimeters. We'll do the measurements we'll and everything. We'll do the measurements in a second. But yeah, I think yeah. maybe some people think that this might be a little bit too big as for a dress watch. 6R15? You know? What is in there? Yeah, it has... Uh, no, no, 4R36. That's uh, probably also okay, why. Okay. But, personally, I don't think there's a huge difference between... I mean, there's like a 10-hour difference in power reserve. Sacrilege. And the, that's what did about, you just that's say? That's about it, man. Between the 4R and the 6R. You heard it here first. Wow, guys. Um, um, check out that movement, though. Look tell me that. tell me if you feel that way. Look, at that, gold, look at that below. gold rotor. That, that's not gold. It's solid 18, 22 karat oh. yellow gold. It's getting more precious <laughs> as time goes just, on. Just kidding, guys. It's, it is not really gold. But yeah, you know what's funny? This is a first impression for me. Um, yeah, let's, well, get, I've let's seen knock it a, that out first. A handful first. of times. That's true. And obviously, this is a uh, full on. You've had this watch for. Couple months right now? Yeah, two months now, I think. Um, because Adam wanted to show off uh, what he's wearing right now, we're gonna do a wristwatch oh, check before yeah. we start. Today I am rocking a I could call this new off the I could really track. I could really call this new old stock if I wanted to. Well we you bought it from not the original owner though. Uh not the original owner. I got this from Robert in the IWA group, uh great Facebook group as well, on top of our properly wound group. Yeah, yeah. Um this is a 1977 Bulova 666 Devil Diver. Um, so it is quartz, yes, but the awesome thing about this is it is in absolutely pristine condition. Original. Most of the uh, watches that you find like this on eBay, hmm. all the edges are gone. It's pretty much polished to shit. And I mean, this even has like the, the br like look at the brushing and the contrast between the beveled ed edges on the... And you notice um, that the like, Bakelite insert even. Bakelite um, insert original. But usually there's hazing or fogging under yeah. there, and, and that's fresh. It's a really, really, really good example. Original crystal too, which is usually hard to find because the the magnification the, the dome is on the underside. It's still a flat crystal, and the the magnif the dome or the, sorry the why can't we the cyclops that? is underneath. Why can't we do that more often? Which why? is pretty cool because that's the one thing I mean, I really hate about cyclops magnifiers: yeah. the fact that they bubble out. Yeah. And of course, you know you're gonna wear the watch. It's gonna smudge, and then you're gonna try to clean it off. Yeah. And you're gonna hit this little groove on top. It makes yeah. so much more sense to have it on the so, other side. Absolutely love this yeah. thing. Original yeah. bracelet too. Uh, I mean, this thing is this thing's unbelievable. Forty millimeters, pretty modern size for a for a nineteen seventy seven. It's five thousand dollars right now. Watch. Out properly wound, $5, yeah, $5, five grand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so guys, back to the highlight of this episode. This is the S A R Y. What is that number again? S A R Y. Uh, o fifty five. O fifty five. And then there's a black dial version. And for some reason, I can't remember right now what number that is, but it's the sorry. It's probably like 053 yeah, or 057, 057 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's probably not too far off. Are those blue hands? They are. They're not blued, but they are blue. Yes. 
Okay, so Maybe. it's a little... I'm going to try to capture it. They look black on, on this B cam, but I'll let you know they are just a very dark sapphire blue. And while I'm giving you my first impression, I'm going to go ahead and take the calipers to yeah, it. let's whip those out. Um, so let's see. So the width is about 42. Oh, okay, 42. Wow. Cool. Really? So it is a little bigger. It's almost... It reminds me of your Sumo. I'm not going to lie. Um, and it's got a thickness of 12 millimeters. Mm -hmm. You have a lug to lug. Now this is sort of the defining factor for me when it comes to wearing a watch. A 49. Okay. Not too bad. 49. And then this is a 22. Yeah, 22. Lug standard lug. 22 lugs. So it's interesting because they doll it up like a, a dress watch, right? Yeah. But its dimensions are much sportier and much larger. Kind of like the modern Grand Seikos. A little bit. A lot of them. You know what I mean? A lot of the sportier Grand Seikos. Oh, like especially the, the GMT. Even the Snowflake is what? The Snowflake's like 41, I think. Yeah, they've got something they've like that. They've got an interesting trend of making their watches bigger. Yeah. Their Grand Seiko line, their, their entire lineup. So it, it um, really is a modern dress watch, sort of, in every sense of the word. And I say recently, of, but sporty dress. They've always made bigger watches. I think Seiko's always pushed That's the boundaries true. of like, you know what I mean? They've, been, they've always been a little unorthodox in their sizing. Yeah. So, I'll give them credit where credit is due. They, yeah. they caught onto the trend much earlier, but this is just a, a pretty a large dress watch. It's it weird is. calling it a dress watch. What, what's your water resistance on this guy? Uh, I believe it's uh, 100, or 10 ATM, so 100 meters. Let's see okay. if it says anything on Non screw down crown, of course, it's at 4R36. 4R36, yeah. So it's not it's the 6R15. Hacking hand winding. Hacking hand winding, 40 hour power, 42 hour, 40 hour, whatever it is, mm -hmm. power reserve rather than the 50 that's found in the Saarb, the 6R15 yeah. movement. Which would kind of be its competitor, um, although the Saarb is a yeah. little bit smaller. So, um, yeah, but this is also a little bit cheaper too, you know what I mean? So the, the price is a little bit more fair, and it has that freaking awesome kanji date wheel as well. Yeah, because this is a Japanese domestic model only, I yes, believe. Am I correct? correct. So yeah, you, it's the JDM. You, what did you buy? It I, got, I actually got it on Amazon. But it was like it was hmm. through some some seller that had you're slightly like fulfilled by Amazon, one of those uh, things. Okay, you know what okay. I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so first impression, I really like the bracelet. I really like the clasp. I I, I I'm actually a really big fan of this bracelet. Um, it's it's weighty. I, I can't say with certainty that those uh, center links are solid, but they certainly feel that way for as much half that this bracelet has. Mm -hmm. um, and the detailing on it's nice. It's it's oyster like. But those center links have this nice little beveled, polished edge between each side where they meet the next link. Yeah. So it, it adds a little dimensionality to the bracelet. So it's actually very nice to look at while you're wearing. Um, and it's always nice to have something that's, you know, creatively different on the wrist. I love a nice bracelet, and this one has, in its own way, a very nice design bracelet that just, you know, it separates it just a little bit more from your typical oyster. And you have a really nice clasp. Um, you know, there are micro adjustments, but there's only two levels I'm seeing here. And of course, you know, around this price range, which is about what, a little over $300? Yeah, right around three, right around the 300 mark for uh, a brand new one. As you know with Seiko, um, this is pretty much the same stamped clasp you're gonna find with any one of their watches in this price range. You know, like the, the Seiko Turtles they're reproducing now also have these, you name it. Um, so, you know, the class itself, it doesn't get high marks for that, although I do like um, its profile on the wrist. It does look really nice, and I'm sure they provide enough length. Do they give you half lengths as well, or are they all whole lengths? Uh, no, just all holes. Huh, okay, that's okay. And then push push pin uh, system yeah, here. standard push uh, You know, pin. you don't, don't, don't expect anything like a screw in. Pin and collar, pin and collar. Um, other than that, I really love the case. I mean, sort of classic Seiko styling, mm -hmm. um, where you have these sort of twisted lugs. Um, I say twisted because you've got a brushed side, brushed top lug, but then of course you have this sort of sloping, uh, high polished edge. And they, they do this with a lot of their watches. And I'll actually just, again, I'll highlight my Grand Seiko. You see that feature there. You see that feature here in the Seiko Sumo. Um, it's, it's sort of like a Seiko design cue now. I mean, and you know, of course they, they vary how that's done. Uh, from watch to watch, but it's actually done very well here, and I like the execution of the lugs as well. I like how they slope. You know, they're also known for this. Like, they've got these dramatic lugs. Most Seikos have these very dramatically curved lugs. Which, especially with the, the, like, the lug length on this one, makes it wear really mm -hmm. snug on the wrist. Oh, and one last note about the bracelet. I'm sorry, I guess it has a... Do they do have solid end links? So, you know, getting a little bit more money's worth out of the, uh, um, the bracelet here. Is this... This is a uh, hard lex? Uh, yeah. So hard like uh, see-through back. It's pretty cool. I, I do like see-through case backs. Let's see if I can get it to focus so you guys can see what that looks like. 
it's pretty solid if you've never seen a Seiko see-through case back. They're, they're pretty much done up all the same. Very, very good visibility, the big window, so you can see the, the uh, movement in there. In-house, baby. Um, I like the watch. There's no loom on here. Nope. Always a fan of the non-loom, because you know it's going to age dress well. watch. You know? Yep. Yeah, and it's a dress watch. Uh, I'll give you guys a really quick wrist, uh, wrist check uh, while Adam gives you his, I guess, days yeah, in thoughts. the life. Uh, yeah, so one of the things uh, I'm very, very surprised is how comfortable this thing is. Yeah. For, for the size and sort of the overall heft, um, for being a, like a larger dress watch with 22 millimeter lugs, it's really, really comfortable on the wrist. It almost sort of just, uh, especially, I think, I think a big part of it has to do with those lugs, how those lugs, you can sort of see, see how they're sloping right down onto your wrist. I think that's a big part of it, and it's kind of... Uh, oh, right there is perfect, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a perfect shot right there. You can see how that bracelet just comes straight down uh, and contours right onto the wrist. Um, Oh God, there's not really that much to say. Honestly, I the, one of the biggest things I was surprised like living day to day with this was I always just sort of look down and s to stare at the bracelet. Because yeah. the, the bracelet in um, in uh, in like a sunny condition or just daylight in general, mm -hmm. those polish bits really, really come out when you just sort of twist that watch. Um, honestly, it's really reminiscent. You can probably see it here. I'm sorry. We, we have a new monitor up top side. Yeah. So that's what if you, if you think I'm just... You can daydreaming. It is, it is a little blingy, okay. actually. It you is know? a little blingy. Well, yeah. it's a dress watch, too, right? Yeah. It looks really good. It I um, really, really good. Honestly, yeah. I would say that as a total package, I think this is better than that Quartz Grand Seiko that we reviewed. Do you remember that? The SBGX? Yes. Do you guys remember that? That's a, that's a very... I mean, that's a really good movement in the watch. Yeah, um, and it's a bold claim. So, I, okay, let's say, I will say this. The dial on the Grand Seiko was obviously a little bit better, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think as a total package with case design, the contrast between the finishings. The unique um, chapter ring. Yeah, the bracelet that has a little bit more, uh, like, the you know, the blinginess, the polish bits that we're talking about, rather than just that sort of plain brushed oyster mm -hmm. that that Grand Seiko had. I actually think this is overall a better looking watch aesthetically. And, and the kanji date wheel too is, is freaking awesome. And it has the blue hands too. There's is it a lot on of the kanji or can you get an English on I know there's English too as well. Okay. Yeah, but cool, I just cool. keep it on kanji just because it's cooler. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know that's a really bold statement because the SBGX retails for like, what, like six, seven times the amount mm. um, that this goes for, but I, I don't, I don't know, man. There's, some, there's something about this. I kind of yeah. want to agree with you. I mean, this one feels more inspired than that one. I mean, that yeah. one is just like a very... Um, it's a very good dress watch. It's a very good dress watch. I still like that watch. Yeah. Um, and you sold it off a little while ago. I still think it's a, a really fine dress watch. A very refined, great movement. But it's very oh, absolutely. basic. And, you know, they went with yeah. those simple choices of just a very simple oyster brace. And Seiko's kind of pulling back on their Grand Seiko line. They're going back with some of their heritage pieces. Uh, and then, of yeah. course, their their new designs are just very... Uh, I don't want to say uninspired, because I love Seiko. But they're, they're not as exciting as some of their, I'll say, lesser offerings. Because they, I feel like they, they're willing to take a little bit more risk here stylistically than they are with the Grand Seiko line. Yeah. Especially now that they've moved into just it being Grand Seiko's own thing. I feel like they need like staple bracelets, staple watch case designs, staple aesthetics that people are going to define as Grand Seiko. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then everything else is just for them to play with, which is really good for us. Yeah. I, I think you're right, though, as a total package. I mean, you know, it's just, it's a lot nicer to look at. I mean, it's nice having a sweeping second hand, and the oh, sweep yeah. on this is great. The way those, again, they're very, very dark, like, sapphire blue hands. Um, oh, they, of course. They, I mean, there's so many, like, with, with automatic, there's so many intangible things, you know what I mean? Like, you're the you're giving the automatic life when you're wearing it. There's like a, a really deep connection with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether you believe in that or not, it's definitely there for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's weird. One of the things I didn't like about it is how much those hands stand out. You can kind of tell what I'm talking about oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't bother me so much in person. I remember you sent me some pictures. Um, in person, it's not as exaggerated as, as it is on camera. Um, but I, and you likely have noticed that too. They, because they look black, it's a very weird contrast between yeah. them and the dial. If it was a lighter blue, 
Um, maybe it would play a little bit better. Without. I think I think you're probably right about that. Yeah, that's they, the they only. They probably could have gone because this isn't blue heat treated anyway, so they could have just no. gone with lighter paint for the yeah to sort of uh, you know not be as contrasted with the with the dial. I agree, especially since everything else is literally mm. steel or silver or white. They also have a line called the Ananta, I believe, Ananta, mm -hmm. Ananta, mm -hmm. um, that has a very similar lug design. Uh, with some of their sports watches, when you notice that the sides of the case slope up over top of the bezel, and you can sort of see what I'm talking about there with those lugs. It's mm -hmm. a very, very small design choice, but again, it just it provides visual interest. And it makes Seiko's, it a little chunkier, too. Yeah. It, makes, it gives it a little bit of robust. More girth, yeah. but larger lugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Seiko's always good about that. And I think that's why, uh, as collectors, everyone really enjoys Seiko because they've got such a good diversity of like case designs. Even if the cases are similar in style, like there's very nuanced ways that they they redesign each case and give it its own life. Oh, yeah. and by the way, Stein Crown, that's pretty cool too. So, what rating are you giving this out of ten? Because uh, what other colors are there? There's just black dial, black dial, and the silver. Black black dial, black hands. Uh, silver hands. Black dial silver hands. I might want to see that. I would yeah. give this... Uh, uh, it's weird. Overall, it's because I feel like you should grade the aesthetic separate from like the movement and any sort of mechanical Yeah, it's kind of tough with the different price brackets and stuff like that. I would say overall, by itself, look at 8 out of 10. Yeah. I would enjoy, I would enjoy wearing this. I would buy this and enjoy wearing it, but I, I would feel like you know the 9 to 10 region is obtainable and I would maybe want a different dress watch. I give it an eight, as well. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Same feelings or? Yeah. I mean, like I, I really wanted to try this out. Like I'm probably not going to keep this watch to be honest, um, but if, if, for the price, I think it's it's almost unbeatable and easy you know? to hold on to. Yeah. yeah. It's for br brand new, I think on Amazon it's like just under three. It fluctuates around that three hundred mark. So like, like this upper two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, Lower really, depending like, on your budget, this is certainly the, a good watch. Oh, I keep yeah. forgetting that it's just right around $300. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is a really good value. No, for value for money? You got this and a turtle and you're under 500 bucks or we're around 500 bucks. There you go. Seiko family. <laughs> Seiko families unite. <laughs> the two watch collection. <laughs> we're going to have to do another yeah. one of those. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this video, it's likely you enjoyed the sorry. <laughs> or you just enjoyed the commentary. I don't know. I don't know why you come here. Uh, but we thank you for doing so. Uh, if you disliked it, that's okay too. Uh, it's okay to dislike things. I dislike some things uh, sometimes too. You know, it's not unheard of. It's okay, guys. It's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't stop with the therapy. It's fine. We're saying it's fine. It's fine. Um, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet, gang. We, yes, we subscribe. Use... Subscribe. 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 It's just fun to <laughs> say, say it with us. One, two, three. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> Also follow us guys properly on the Facebook. Uh, we have the Facebook page, the Facebook group, uh, very active in there. The Facebook Instagram, and the, the, <laughs> the properly wound the Facebook Instagram. The, the Instagram the properly, Twitter. properly wound website yes. too for blogs and uh, blogs. Blogs yeah. are fun and some cool uh, things we have in the shop. You might even see this sorry in the shop at some point. Once um, I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, guys, stay tuned for more episodes uh, with amazing comparisons, reviews, and of course games. I think the next video we should release is definitely a game. It's been a while since we've done one. But thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.